Hey guys, it's Lauren here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, you may notice this is a different location than my usual sit down videos. This is my living room. Welcome. <laughs> I got tired of my room. So here we are. Not only am I in a new location, but this is my first ever tag video. So there's that. I wanted to do the mid-year freakout tag because I watched a few of them and I honestly like pretty much liked it. And this is the first time I've read a lot of books. I've read over 30 books this year so far and I'm really happy about it, almost 40. And I feel like I've read enough books in order to do these tags. So I decided why not? And also it didn't require that much brain power on my part. And I feel like a lot of my videos lately have just been me hyper-focusing on a book and I'd rather just do a video about a lot of books. So here we are. All right, so I guess let's get started. What's the the best book you've read so far in 2020? This one was pretty easy to figure out, honestly. The number one best book I've probably read this year is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. She is quickly becoming my favorite author and The Poet X is basically this book about this young um, spoken word poet, Ziamara, and she's basically trying to come to terms with her, like turning into this woman and kind of just like making a way for herself in high school, figuring out what she wants to do with her life. Just struggling with all these typical like high school girl things, except it's told through the black girl perspective and what makes her experience be as beautiful as it actually is. So I really liked that book. It's definitely one of my favorites and I cried multiple times. And it was actually the first book I read that was in verse too. <laughs> Elizabeth Acevedo exposed me to many first. And yeah, I don't know. It's definitely one of my favorite books I've read this year. The second book I read was Gone Girl. And so many people mentioned it to me, but I never got to reading it and it was also the book that got me into more thrillers this year, so that was fantastic. I don't know, there was so many plot twists in it and the characters were so freaking problematic, but also so amusing to read about that I was so enthralled by it. It literally had me on the edge of my seat the entire time. I couldn't put it down after I got really into it. It was the most amazing mindfuck ever. Yeah, I couldn't really decide just one best book of 2020. Help me when the end of the year comes because I'm an indecisive motherfucker. Um, what has been your favorite sequel so far in 2020? My favorite sequel so far has to be The Wicked King by Holly Black. The Folk of Air series, I believe that's what it's called. I freaking love that series. I read the entire thing in three days, actually two days, because I read with The Wicked King and The Queen of Nothing in the same day. <laughs> I had a problem, especially since I, de I read it during midterms. I, I had a problem. I love the series. Wicked King, so much happened. Freaking like Cardin and Jude. So many things happened between the two of them and I felt like Jude was like at her prime boss bitch momentum. I just really fucking liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. The Wicked King is my favorite sequel so far of 2020. Is there a new release that you haven't read yet but you're really excited for? Yes. <laughs> I used to not pay attention to books that haven't come out yet but ever since I started being more active in the booktube community, this has kind of changed. So yeah, um, especially I decided to become more engaged on book Twitter and <laughs> I have a couple of anticipated new releases. I guess like the first one that I'd really say is A Phoenix First Must Burn. And it's this compilation of stories that involve black women, I believe. And I don't entirely remember what it's about, but I know that Elizabeth has photos in it and I know it has fantastic reviews. So I am very excited to read it, especially since I'm pretty sure it incorporates fantasy and the supernatural. And we don't see enough black people in those kind of settings. So I'm very excited to read that book. Another book that I am looking forward to reading that I actually saw circling a lot around booktube. I think it was recommended by Angie Thomas and that was How It All Blew Up by Arvin Amadi. I believe. Forgive me if I mispronounce his last name. It's how it all blew up. It is basically this book about this Muslim gay teenager and he was pulled aside at the airport and basically I think he had to explain what happened that led him up to that point. And I think it's like one of those books where like you start at like this future scene and then you end up going back and showing everything about like what happened that led you up to that point. And I thought it'd just be like a really interesting read. And I don't know, I don't know. I've been getting more into LGBTQ plus books this month and I just got back into reading this year. So. Um, I start reading them again and I've liked them a lot. So I'm really excited to just add another LGBTQ plus book to my TBR. Those are my two most anticipated new releases. What is your biggest disappointment so far? 
Um, oh, oh, that one's actually pretty easy. It's Carry On by Rainbow Roll. And it's basically this book that's kind of a spinoff off Fangirl. And it's the fan fiction that the protagonist of Fangirl wrote. It basically follows like Simon, whatever the fuck his last name is. And it's kind of a Harry Potter parody. That's kind of like the best way I can explain it. And mm, I didn't I didn't like it. I'm sorry, y'all. And like, I feel like it's hyped up so much on book two, but I just, I, I didn't like it. I don't know, maybe it's because it's young adult fiction. There's some young adult fiction that you know is basically mostly made for middle schoolers. And there's some young adult fiction that you know is made for older, young, adults. It's just, it read to me like poorly written fan fiction and trust. I've read a lot of fan fiction, so it was bad. I didn't find the characters to be all that intriguing. Um, a lot of the scenes, I don't know, the scenes are written kind of slow. The book was working retroactively because we were being jumped into Simon's last year. And I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't like it. I couldn't even finish it. I had to DNF the book. So that was definitely my most disappointing read because I really loved Fangirl and I was looking forward to reading that book because it, the fan fiction itself was hyped up so much in Fangirl. So I figured that like Carry On would be like just as well written and everything, but it, it, it wasn't. Maybe it just wasn't my taste because I've heard a lot of people have liked it, but I, I did not like it. So yeah, that's that. That was very disappointing. My other really disappointing read, which is honestly a more recent read, is Where the Crawdads Sing. I heard a lot about that also. I feel like it got hyped up randomly as well this year, and I did not like it. Maybe I should have expected it because it was very nature focused. And I feel like nature focused books or like setting focused books tend to be hit or miss for me. It's really like a lawn blower in the background. So if you like hear that, that's why. Yeah, nature focused books tend to be a hit or miss for me because when you focus too much on setting, I feel like you lose a lot of plot and you lose a lot of that character development. So yeah, I did not like it. I feel like it was very overhyped and the whole court thing, I just felt like not all the points in the book really connected together cohesively. Like, I'm not gonna say more because I don't wanna spoil it, but that was very disappointing. Um, my biggest surprise so far, as I said before, Gone Girl was honestly one of my biggest surprises because I expected it to be one of those books where it's just like, it's been like really hyped up like Twilight or some shit and ends up being like really fucking terrible. It has been hyped up a lot, but I never read it myself and I never really read a thriller before Gone Girl either. So I was, I was very hesitant about reading it, but then I read it and ended up really, really liking it. So, I mean, I guess it, it, it proved me wrong and it really got me into thrillers. And because of Gone Girl, I ended up liking this other series I wasn't really expecting to like because again it was a thriller. I never used to read thrillers like that. So the next really surprising book that I read this year was the Truly Devious book. I read the entire series, the Truly Devious series, and I made a video about that, which I will link down below. I read the Truly Devious series and it was this YA thriller book and it's about this girl named Stevie who goes to this academy and tries to solve this murder mystery while also trying to do typical high school things. And I ended up liking it a lot. Wasn't expecting that, wasn't expecting it at all but I ended up enjoying it. And it's definitely really encouraging because now I know that I'm willing to read any other future thriller novels that come across my way. It's not as scary or as scarring as I thought it would be, or maybe I just have issues. But yeah, no, I, I, I really liked it. <laughs> Who is your favorite new to you or debut author? Hands down, Elizabeth Acevedo. So uh, her first book was The Poet X and it came out in 2016, which was the same time as my freshman year in high school. And by that time I wasn't reading books as often. So she is very new to me and I've already read two of her books and I ordered a third one. And I'm just, I'm, I'm loving her. She is giving. I did not expect to connect so much to her books, especially since they're written in verse. And I fucking like hate poetry. So the fact that she could get me to like her books, even though written in verse that says a lot to me and she's I don't know she's one of the few authors along with Tomi Adeyemi and Angie Thomas that managed to make me feel seen in a book it's something about the way that they write and the things that they bring up when they're writing you know, like the little quirks that the characters have that call to me more than any other protagonist in any other book that I've read no she surprised me she came out the cut and really just said I see you I see you, sis. I appreciate the fuck out of that. Yeah, no, Elizabeth Acevedo, hands down, has to be one of my favorite authors this year. Who's your favorite fictional crush from this year? It's, oof. It's kind of hard, because I feel like there is a love interest in a book. You usually root for the protagonist and that love interest to be together, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you want that person for you, if you know what I'm saying. And if you did, you'd be like, no, they belong with that 
character because that's the whole point of rooting for them to be together. So this was kind of a difficult question to answer, but I ended up coming up with two answers. Um, it would be Cardin from the Folk of Air trilogy and Darlington from Ninth House. And they are both not fully human at this point, but is that a spoiler? Hopefully y'all have read Ninth House because they are both um, not entirely fully human and that I don't know what that says about me, but I like Cardin because I used to be a Draymani ship, you know, Draco, Hermione, in case that wasn't clear. Um, but yeah, I used to be a Draco Hermione shipper until I realized that it's basically I was shipping Hermione with her oppressor and I was like, that's kind of... But, but to be fair, like, I feel like Draco in fan fiction, like, you write him in a way where he actually has a redemption arc and where he realizes his wrongs and he, he's just a better person in fan fiction than he is in the HB series, okay? Okay. <laughs> Carter reminded me a lot of how I thought of Draco in the, the Harry Potter series, except Carter was less pathetic, in my opinion. I feel like he had more power in that book and he actually had a sort of character arc. Like him and Jude's relationship was literally the most powerful thing. But Cardin and Jude's, while like not the healthiest relationship, I did love it a lot. And there's something about Cardin. Like I love the fact that he can be a submissive and kind of a dumb at the same time. I feel like I've revealed too much, <laughs> but I, I, I love that. I love that he can be aggressive. I love how he can be kind of ambitious, but also not like too ambitious and how he kind of just, I don't know. I, I, I love the I love the way he lives. I, I love that. I love that for him. I feel like I'm digging myself into a hole. Maybe I'm exposing too much. Anyway, moving on. Darlington. Um, Darlington is a darling, period. Um, <laughs> I really liked Darlington because he did come off as like this golden boy. I felt like he was a good foil for Alex, who was definitely nowhere near um, golden and shiny. But I feel like the more I learned about Darlington, the more I sympathized. The more that his character made sense to me, and I kind of also liked the way that he interacted with every single character. Even if he didn't necessarily like them, he gave them respect. I feel a little thing for guys that like to get their education and are also like preppy and take care of people. I, I don't know. I feel like there's something about an educated boy that is so sexy. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> I'm doing it again. His interactions with Alex, honestly, they, they gave me life and I would not mind having those same interactions with that character if he was a real person. So yeah, Darlington is also up there on my list of fictional crushes so far in 2020. No other boy in the books I've read has compared to them. Who is your new favorite character? Oh, who's my new favorite character? I don't know. What kind of question is that? Oh. I didn't even come up with an answer for this one. This is hard. What? Okay. Um, it'd have to be Alex Stern, I guess. Galaxy Stern from Ninth House. Wait. Fuck. I don't know. I guess Ziamara. Ziamara and Alex Stern. Those would be my two favorite characters. Ziamara from The Poet X and Alex Stern from Ninth House because they're both like strong women. They don't necessarily have perfect past and both trying to like make away from themselves and figure out their own future. And I like a woman that can figure out who the fuck what she wants. You know, I like I like that. So those two kind of stand to me as I guess like my favorite characters so far this year. So far. I don't know, it's hard to pick when you get like attached to certain characters. I guess if I were to add to that, it'd be Solomon from My Highly Illogical Behavior because he's actually the opposite of Ziamara and Alex Stern in the fact that he has severe social anxiety. He's agoraphobic, so basically he's afraid of anything that makes him feel like he might be embarrassed or humiliated in any sort of way, so he avoids outside. But he is still like a really cool dude and I respect his fandom for Star Trek and other nerdy things, so I guess, yeah, yeah, I don't know. He's like a recent character that I've read that I just really liked, so I'm just gonna add him to the list. Those three. I'm indecisive as fuck. I'm so sorry. <laughs> a book that made you cry. The Poet X. I'm sorry. I feel like I keep on saying it, but it did. I told you, it made me cry like multiple times. So yeah, I can't honestly recall any other book this year making me cry so far, so. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the Poet X. Like I saw myself in that book, so that's why I cried. And I don't know, Ziamar just pulled emotions out of me, man. I. Shit. A book that made you happy. Highly illogical behavior. As I mentioned before, Solomon is actually like one of my new favorite characters, I guess I would say, just because I liked the way that he was in that book. And highly illogical behavior, it was hilarious, it was well written. It's basically this book about this kid named Solomon. As I mentioned before, he's agoraphobic, so he has been inside for about like five years or like three years of his life and he hasn't been outside since like not even like to step out into the backyard he hasn't been outside of his house basically like this girl named i forgot the girl's name actually 
shit. I literally just read this book and somehow I forgot the characters' names. Anyway, like this one like girl character who is the other protagonist of the book, um, she makes it her mission to make him better and to basically like make him get over his anxiety. So she comes over, they eventually become friends and there is this kind of love triangle scenario that takes place and I don't know, it was a really fun read. It was hilarious, it was fast paced. And yeah, I just, I, I was down for it. It was a really feel good book. And I was surprised because it's a book about anxiety and sometimes books about anxiety tend to trigger me, but this one was <sighs> chef's kiss. That was one of the books that made me smile this year. Your favorite book to movie slash TV show that you've seen so far? Um, I don't know. I mean, I watched Love, Victor. Oh, oh, I also actually, I watched Doom Patrol and I mentioned it in one of my videos before and I really fucking like that show, it's amazing. But it's based off DC Comics, so I'm not sure if it counts, but yeah, no, Doom Patrol is fucking fantastic. Season two is coming out in like a day or two, I think. So pfft, let's go. What's the most beautiful book that I've bought this year? Um, Actually, it's really easy. <laughs> So like I said, I've read two of um, Elizabeth Acevedo's books and I got the book that she literally just came out with this year and that is Clap When You Land. And this cover is fucking beautiful. I mean, look at that shit. Look at it. And not only that, but when you take off the cover, look, like, fuck. Look at all of those colors. It's cute. It's cute. It's giving. So I, I have to, that is an amazing book cover. I think that's all. That was fun. Thank you for that. That was my first kind of book tag thing I've done as a video. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, you should like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, follow me on my social media accounts. They are all linked down below. Also, remember, Black Lives still fucking matter. This is not a moment, it's a movement. I still have links down below for foundations and petitions that you can sign, things like that. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.